I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and the first smartphone I ever owned was a BlackBerry. Back then, one out of every five smartphones sold was built by the juggernaut known as Research in Motion. But a decade later, BlackBerry is on the ropes with less than 1% market share, and it hopes to revive its flagging fortunes by focusing on privacy and on once again making it a privilege to own a BlackBerry. Does the BlackBerry Priv deserve a place in your holster? Let's find out. The BlackBerry Priv is a fusion of new and old concepts, unlike anything else on the market today. Its Quad HD P OLED display is absolutely gorgeous, its Gorilla Glass 4 lens curving at the sides and stopping short of the bottom lip to make room for a front-firing speaker with a voice as loud as its grille is wide. Up top is the BlackBerry brand name, flanked by that old BlackBerry trademark, the multicolored notification light. On the other side, the glass weave back cover has some disappointing give to it, but it's finished in one of the grippiest soft touch coatings we've ever come across. It means it sticks to your fingers when you use a thumb to slide the screen up and out of the way, revealing the Priv's most distinctive feature. There are two ways to look at the Priv's keyboard. If you're coming from another BlackBerry, you'll probably be disappointed. Because they're crammed into such a thin casing, the keys don't have the travel or mechanical feedback BlackBerrys come to be known for. These keys aren't as clicky as those on the Classic, and they're not as spacious as those on the Passport. But the Priv is one of only a very few Android phones to pack a physical keyboard of any kind, and it easily beats what little competition remains. Though it's a little cramped, it's still designed very well. After about a week of practice, we're now able to type more words per minute with greater accuracy with the physical keyboard than the software one. Now, BlackBerry's virtual keyboard is just as good as ever, with excellent predictive text that lets you swipe directly on the keys to autocomplete. But we really only use it when we need to use the Priv one-handed. The rest of the time, we prefer the physical keyboard. And not just for typing. BlackBerry has used capacitive sensors, along with Android's mouse framework, to make the keyboard into one big trackpad. That means you can place the cursor exactly where you want it just by moving your thumbs across the buttons. It also means you can scroll lists, web pages, menus, and more without ever touching the screen. And considering how tall the Priv is when it's open, that makes for a much more comfortable experience. Then there's the shortcut. You can program any of the Priv's keys as a quick launch button to open any app you want, and each supports either a short or a long press for a total of 52 possible shortcuts. Or you can set any keystroke to open device search, letting you jump right into a contact, an app, or a Google search. Okay, so we've been focusing on the upsides of the Priv experience. Unfortunately, things do start getting substantially bumpier when it comes to software. This is a custom interface built atop Android Lollipop, and that older foundation means the Priv lacks significant improvements brought by Android Marshmallow. Things like performance upgrades, battery saving measures, and most crucially for a phone that bills itself as a private device, individual app permissions. BlackBerry has promised a Marshmallow upgrade sometime in 2016. Until then, its DTEC security suite will have to do. And much of what this offers is generic, simple stuff like using a lock screen, but it does let you know which apps are asking for specific data like your location, which is useful. The Priv also comes with device-wide encryption enabled out of the box and a variety of behind-the-scenes security measures. Though taken together, they don't provide much more security than comparable offerings from, say, Samsung or Google. And oddly, there's no fingerprint scanner in sight. The BlackBerry Launcher is peppered with custom enhancements, many carried over from BlackBerry 10. Most prominent is the Hub, which aggregates notifications from various sources into a single stream. If you like getting all your alerts in one list, this is the best way to do it. Longtime BlackBerry users will feel right at home here. Unfortunately, that means they'll also feel right at home waiting for the Hub to catch up to them. It's sluggish, even more so than it was on BB10. And like much of the Priv experience, it's inconsistent. Google Hangouts isn't supported, for example. That inconsistency isn't confined to the Hub. It bleeds over into third-party titles as well. While the Gmail app recognizes keyboard shortcuts, the Inbox by Gmail app does not. Keyboard scrolling works in Instagram and Twitter, but it's inverted in Facebook, and it doesn't work at all in Google Maps. It also makes Google Docs interesting, to say the least. 
The mere presence of the keyboard makes games like Asphalt 8 basically unplayable, at least until they're updated. And otherwise useful features like device search are hobbled by a mixture of performance issues and bad design decisions. There's so much lag that it either doubles up on the first letter you type or drops it completely, and it doesn't clear searches between sessions, like in BB10. These problems are a shame because the BlackBerry Launcher has some really smart features. If you're using a trusted device, like a smartwatch, you can set the priv to automatically wake up when it detects it's been picked up, and it'll go to sleep when you put it face down. Anytime you see an app icon with these three dots beneath it, you can swipe up on it to reveal its accompanying widget, and then tap anywhere else to close it when you're done, which is so cool. Swipe in from the edge and you get the productivity tab with quick shortcuts to tasks, email, contacts, and calendar. All this makes the Priv a very complex smartphone, but also one you can tweak more extensively than most Androids. Blackberries have never been known for their cameras, and the Priv looks to change that. It's the same sensor from the Moto X Pure Edition, cropped to 18 megapixels and given optical stabilization, and it's capable of some solid photos with accurate colors and crisp detail in daylight. It can even make waning autumn afternoon light work for it in some cases, with HDR helping out in the shadows at the expense of saturation. Color sometimes suffers in general, especially in low light where everything just gets kind of washed out and full of grain. We shot a few photos side by side with the Nexus 6P, whose camera did a much better job of preserving color and contrast, especially at night. Still, the Priv is capable of taking decent photos, as long as you stick to the primary camera. We can't say the same for the selfie shooter, an anemic 2 megapixel module whose main distinctions are digital noise and poor low light performance. In camcorder mode, where the Priv maxes out at 4K and 30 FPS, the output is so so. On the bright side, the stabilization does a really nice job compensating for footsteps and handshakes, and autofocus and exposure keep up with even quick pans. Audio capture is pretty nice too, able to separate the sound of a sneeze from the sound of a breeze. Nice. Video is notably sharp as well, especially in 4K, where you can just freeze the playback to get a really nice frame. But in smooth expanses like a clear sky, there's an awful lot of digital noise, almost like compression artifacting. It's not enough to make the video unwatchable, but it's definitely a little distracting. Fortunately, you can shoot all the 4K video you like if you invest in a memory card. The Priv has a micro SD slot to augment the 32 gigs of onboard storage. We've used the BlackBerry Priv for seven days on T-Mobile between rural New York and greater Boston, and we've actually made more phone calls than usual in that time. Part of that is because the Priv is just so dang comfortable to talk on with its tall display deployed. Neither we nor our callers had any complaints about sound quality over either earpiece or speakerphone, and the dedicated mute key, which at first struck us as kind of dumb, is one of those features you have to experience to understand how convenient it can really be. We touched on the system lag a few minutes ago, and while the Priv is much smoother than it was out of the box due to a recent software update, there's still plenty of room for improvement in terms of fluidity throughout. There are also just weird annoyances that you don't see on other flagship smartphones. Apps crash pretty regularly, and every time it boots up it takes several minutes to get itself sorted, during which time it runs the processor like crazy. Just like on the Moto X, the Snapdragon 808 runs pretty hot on the Priv under even a moderate load, and maybe that has something to do with the battery life we're getting, which is undistinguished. We were only able to get more than four hours of screen on time over a 16-hour day once in seven days. Now, we routinely run our phones pretty hard here at the P-Machine, and this is a Canadian review unit, not built specifically for T-Mobile, but that's still a pretty lame showing given the phone's huge battery. The BlackBerry Priv is a device we really want to like, and not just for nostalgia's sake. It packs an innovative keyboard and a beautiful display into a unique form factor, and it brings some really thoughtful software improvements that make Android more useful and customizable, especially in terms of messaging. For enterprise users with specific needs, for the BlackBerry faithful willing to sacrifice consistency for a broader ecosystem, or for Android users desperate for something different, the Priv is absolutely worth a buy. Everyone else, though, will want to wait a bit. There's probably no device out there right now that more badly needs a Marshmallow update, 
which seems likely to fix many of the issues we have with the PRIV. But that won't happen until sometime in the new year, at which point the price might be a little more reasonable than its currently exorbitant $700. For BlackBerry's sake, we hope that price drop and that software update comes sooner rather than later. For much more of the good, bad, and ugly concerning the BlackBerry Priv, folks, pay us a visit at pocketnow.com for the full-length review, available November 19th and linked in the description below. And until next time, this has been Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you to keep your privilege private, or your privacy privilege, whatever. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.